Hi, and welcome to the introduction to the Shadow Studio 3 presets video. In this video, we're gonna run down installation of the presets using the AEScripts Manager app, as well as a manual installation. We'll cover the different types of presets, .ffx and .aep, as well as how to get started with the presets themselves. So assuming you've got the plugin installed, you can come to the about and support here and click on the get support. And that will bring you to our notion page where we have a lot of detailed information about pretty much everything this video is gonna talk about as well as a bunch more. But if you're like me and you don't know how to read, then that's not gonna do you much good. So this video has got you covered. Back in the plugin, we can also click on the preset gallery and that will direct you to our preset gallery page, which gives you at a glance, a look at all the different presets that are available. You can hover over them to get some more information and to play the different videos. You'll notice that different presets come in different formats. So this one is .aep and this one is a .ffx file. We have two different types of formats for these presets and you might be wondering why are they bundled in different formats. The reason is that while .ffx offers convenient drag and drop functionality, it's limited to a single layer, whereas some of the more advanced presets require multi-layer compositing and therefore couldn't be bundled as an FFX preset. With that out the way, let's cover the installation of Shadow Studio 3. So to start, we're gonna cover the installation using the AEScripts Manager app because that's just the easiest way to do so. You can download it from the AEScripts website and once you've logged into your account, come down to Shadow Studio and click install. Once that's done, come down to the different versions that it's installed and click on that. And you'll see that if you have multiple versions of After Effects installed, it's installed the presets and the plugin for each version that you have. If you click on where it's installed the presets, and that will open up a finder window that shows you where the presets are installed. Now we also have the presets project file for the AEP presets, and you may want to move this into a more convenient location. Otherwise, once you've installed it, you can come to the effects and presets window. You don't need to restart After Effects. You can just right click and click refresh list. And then if you type in the prefix of SS3, you will see all the presets are installed here. That covers the installation using the manager app. But if you hate freedom and you insist on doing a manual install, you can come back to the Notion page and under presets, preset installation, manual preset installation, you can find out where your presets directory will be. Then navigate to the download that you downloaded from the AScripts website. Uh, we actually have a link to this uh, Notion page here, but under presets, you can simply copy these presets into this location. You will also have this uh, presets project file. Copy this to a convenient location for you and let's open it up and check it out. When you open the project file, you may receive some warnings about missing plugins. Don't worry, you don't need any paid third-party plugins, except for obviously Shadow Studio 3. It might say missing Quick Chromatic Aberration 3. That's a free plugin, but it's not exactly necessary. It just adds a bit of extra jazz and you may notice if you don't have the Deep Glow plugin, it will give you a warning as well, but don't worry. What we've done is included an inbuilt Deep Glow preset so that you don't need to buy Deep Glow if you don't want to. To demonstrate this, let's go to the backlit preset and all these presets are laid out in a similar way. If they consist of a chain of pre-comps, they're named based on the order of the chain. So zero is the very first uh, composition in the chain and that usually contains the animation. All of these presets are then looped. So we have a looping pre-comp then finally, we have the render here composition, and this is where all the assembly takes place and you can just render from here. Now, if we come to the glow layer, we'll see that we have the deep glow preset here with a bunch of glows and gammas and whatnot. This is a preset that we've prepared specially that'll give you a similar look to the deep glow plugin without having to buy it. However, if you own the plugin, you can of course disable those and turn on the deep glow plugin as it's quite a bit more performant than 10 copies of the Glow. It'll give you a warning, only use either the plugin or the preset, don't use both because if you turn them all on, then you'll get blinded. Now, you may be wondering why we have some of the presets here and they're also included inside the project file. For example, we have a lo-fi repeater project file and we also have the lo-fi repeater preset. To demonstrate why this is, let's create a new composition and create a text layer then let's come to the preset and apply the lo-fi repeater. And we'll go, cool, this looks really great. And if you find yourself in this situation, that's why we've included the project file as well. So you can come into the lo-fi repeater project file and diagnose, oh, why does it look so different? Inside the project file composition, 
let's diagnose this by turning off all the effects. And we can see, oh, okay, so the text, it's white and it's got a black outline. And then if we just turned on Shadow Studio, we can see, okay, this is the expected result and then turn on the rest of the effects and that's what it is. Coming back to our composition, let's turn off all our effects and go to the character panel, add a black stroke and see what that looks like. We want it to be stroke over fill and maybe a stroke of one. Then if we turn on Shadow Studio 3, we can see, okay, that's looking a lot better. And then if we turn on the other effects, we'll get the final result. And I will just increase the stroke to two pixels that looks good. Some things we can customize, we don't need a solid background if we want to render transparency. And of course you can come into the color tint and change this to be any colors that you want. We also have the gap length. So if you want more samples to be drawn, you can lower this, create sort of a solitaire look, or you can actually increase the distance between each. If we hit U on the keyboard, we'll see the two keyframes that are drawn. And if we play this, we'll see we're getting the infinite loop of our lo-fi preset. Something to keep in mind is that when we were creating these presets, we had no way of knowing which layers and which styles you, the users, would be applying it to. So we couldn't account for that. We also don't have a license to redistribute these paid fonts. So for example, if you open up the project file and After Effects has replaced it with a completely different font, that can drastically affect how these presets look. And so if when you open it up, it's changed it to a font and it looks completely wrong, just open up the preset gallery and see, oh, okay, they've applied it to a really chunky font. So I should probably do the same if I want it to match that style. And with that, that's it for our preset overview tutorial video. We'll be releasing a few in-depth guides to specific presets over the coming days. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy these presets and using Shadow Studio 3. Available now at aescripts.com.